Greetings. Welcome to Powered by Nyami. I'm your guide and host, Kwesi Kunadu. This week, our focus will be emotions. I'll begin with a story. One day, my daughters and I were sitting in a restaurant, a favorite restaurant of ours, um, somewhere in Brooklyn, New York. And while waiting on our food to arrive, we were having a small, small talk. And during that talk, um, youngest daughter, Athea, said this to me. Well, actually to the three of us, that is mother, daughter, and myself. She said that I want to experience all the emotions uh, in life uh, that the human experience has to offer. And for a moment within myself, I stepped back and I, I, I pondered it. I wondered about, hmm, what could that mean? And as I pondered it, I began to, you know, think even more or even feel even more what she was getting at. You see, what she was getting at is the idea that human beings are never solely or most importantly um, one emotion or dominated by one emotion, meaning no one is happy or joyous or angry or anxious most of the time, all the time. Um, it's usually... Uh, some mixture um, of these emotions that run through us, like currents um, throughout our waking day and throughout our lives. And so when my daughter said that she wants to experience all the emotions, what essentially what she's getting at, at least in my view, was that she wants to experience all of the feelings um, and sensory perceptions that the human being has the capacity for and that life has to offer. Hence, this focus here on emotions. Now, there's a lot of studies about emotions. There are cognitive psychologists study emotions in terms of the mental processes that either um, undergird or uh, are part of the category of feelings uh, that we tend to associate with emotions. Uh, philosophers study emotions, um, brain science or neuroscience uh, has a field um, that studies emotions. And while all those studies are important in their own right, um, I want to move away from them because for the most part, the simplest theory that they offer, um, boiling down into basics, is that uh, emotions are a category uh, of feelings, that there are kinds of different kinds of feelings that are experienced um, differently um, by human beings, you know, who have, um, you know, the various kinds of um, reactions to stimuli, whether that be loud noise, or that, or that be uh, getting cut off in traffic, or that may be, um, you know, elevator closing in your face, or the train doors in New York City closing your face, or whatever city that may have trains do so. So whatever the stimuli is that provokes or that calls for a certain set or one or more emotion or feeling is what they sort of refer to. Now, I want to move away from emotion as simply or only just feelings uh, or kinds of feelings. I want to think, I want to separate the word emotion, take the E uh, away from the word, uh, at least put it to the side, and then have the word motion onto another side. Uh, what I want to get at, I want to think about the E as the energy. Think of it as a force. Um, you think you know what I'm getting at, as a sort of spirit uh, that puts something in motion. In other words, um, emotions are not the trigger per se, nor are they solely the, um, the response to the trigger, whatever the trigger may be, whatever the stimuli or stimulus may be in our lives. But I want to think about emotions as this spirit, as this energy that is constantly in motion. In other words, what we're referring to as emotions is often simply or most importantly um, a dimension of our spirit and therefore our spirituality uh, that is always in motion. Uh, but that motion, uh, it, it varies uh, and of course is differentiated uh, depending upon time, place, space, um, whom you're with. Um, and, and of course, all things that are going on in the inner life of us, as well as in the outer life of us, in terms of our relationships, workplace, school, you name it. And so all of these forces um, and factors combine to shape this constant energy that's always in motion, right? So I don't want you to think about, well, I want you to think about emotions as an ongoing perpetual motion, right? 
that essentially uh, is volleyed or ping pong, depending upon you know what is happening within our inner lives, within you know our bodies, because emotions are usually felt through the bodies, but emotions are also felt uh, in the head. They're also felt, which is part of the body, but it's felt in the head, meaning in in the mind, as as a non physical um, process. And emotions, of course, are also connected to spirit. That is, there's something that is deep within us that we feel that is not part of the uh, any of the organs. So it's not the heart uh, that we may feel. It's not the liver, even though we may, you know, locate the feeling within our bodies. But sometimes there these feelings uh, and energies they are really um, beyond the body, right? So again, I want to think of, I want to broaden the definition of emotions to include. Um, this ongoing perpetual energy or spirit that is that is as always in motion that is really our spirit that's always in motion and that spirit because it's always in motion it gets ping pong or volleyed against whatever is happening within our inner internal life right our spirit our cognition our, our bodily functions as well as what's going on in the outer world for example you hear some noise in the background um, there's someone working you may hear loud cars, you may hear uh, loud music, whatever the stimuli may be in the world outside of your head, outside of your body, outside of your spirit, all these forces and factors combine to shift, to ping pong, to volley our emotion, right? That is, it, it shapes the emotion that our energy takes, our spirit takes, right? And so what do we do when we are driven or overdriven, you know, by some of these energies that is always in motion. So for example, some of us that may have a temper, uh, what do we do with that energy that is in motion, but the motion is putting us to a point where we may get to a precipice, that we're, you know, about to fall over a deep end, where essentially the energy takes control of us, right? That we essentially don't have any control over our reaction, or our response to whatever stimuli. That's when that energy can become dangerous because that energy is also combustible right and if we don't have the proper management tools to wrap our arms metaphorically around that energy that's always in motion then that energy can sometimes destroy us or lead to our destruction in a number of ways and so one of the tools to manage this energy um, is breathing right first is pausing so even if we're involved in a situation that is escalating and you can feel right right when that energy is what riding the elevator riding the escalator right boiling up and i'll give you an example of this one time i was somewhere um you know in this apartment um with um a young lady and um who i was with and she um jumped in my face um right in front of me now this is someone i was dating so i want to give you some context so it wasn't a complete stranger she jumped in my face and i'll spare you the background the point is that you know she jumped in my face and uh essentially you know crowded my personal space um and and began to bark some words uh at me and in that moment my natural sort of emotive response, right, is, is, is to react to this call to fight and fight, or, or to at least respond uh, with some anger, uh, which is what the person was trying to provoke. Because again, that person is a stimuli, that stimulus, excuse me, that person is uh, a trigger, right? Uh, but what I did do, uh, I looked the person uh, square in the face, but before I did that, rewind for just a few nanoseconds, Immediately, I recognize, well, I'm lying. <laughs> Not immediately, but within a few seconds, I recognize what the person was trying to do. So it's key here is recognition. Um, whom are trying to press your buttons? Whom and what is trying to press your buttons to make that energy that's in motion become or lead to some form of harm or destruction or chaos that you don't need in your life? So key is recognition, right? When, when, when you are... When that energy is right, is, is about to ride you, is about to guide you in a place in the direction that you don't want to go, you don't need to be. And so as I felt that, immediately I recognized what was going on. And so I closed my mouth and sort of gently bit my lip inside. And while I did that, I took about one or two quick breath, right? Right? So internal calm. And then I looked at the person dead in the eyes with a smile and said, you should be glad 
that I am not somebody else, right? And I walked away. Now, whatever this person was trying to do, it failed, right? And I can tell you what they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to essentially um, egg me on or, or, or bait me into um, screaming uh, with them or engaging in an argument or escalating to something more physical, altercation. But none of that happened. And the key was recognizing where this person was trying to what? Move, right? The emotion, trying to move my energy. And secondly, it is my reaction, right? My reaction to that trigger, that stimulus. And my reaction was, mm -mm, this game is not going to work. And so my immediate reaction was to what? Take a pause, pause, hit my lip, and then take two, perhaps three, um, short, deep breath, right? Within, right? So the person did not hear me inhale. That took a few deep breaths, right? Quickly. Because you have to react because these are moments that, you know, you're in the moment and you have to respond sometimes. Sometimes you can take it more calmly, but when you can't, you need to have a way to address that. And then I put that in the eye, right? Confront, but not in the way they were expecting, with calm. And of course, exit. Because that person wants an engagement. That person wants to um, cause trouble, right? And I'm not going to give them that authority over my energy, right? To put my energy in, a, in, a, in motion towards something that is not productive for me and ultimately for that person. And so that's just one example. I'm sure some of you have been in a situation, if not the same, like it enough to know that whatever the trigger or stimulus may be, it is there to move that energy in a certain direction, right? Again, the motion. But we have ways to manage that in the number of situations, right? And I'm sure you can think of others within your lives that you can also um, recall and then put, you know, this kind of perspective, you know, to the test and say, yeah, I could have handled that situation quite differently. Or, yeah, I'm proud of the way that I handled that because that could have been, you know, something very dangerous or harmful or nothing good would have came out of that. And so to recap, um, I'm suggesting here that studies, scholarly studies about emotions and theories of emotions have their place. Um, and they tend to kind of all boil down to emotions as a category of feelings, right? And the different ways or the various ways human beings like you and I um, experience, you know, those feelings you know, throughout our, you know, daily um, lives and beyond. But I also want to suggest that the E in emotion, you know, stand for the sort of energy or spirit, which is your spirit, my spirit, and the motion, right? is essentially the catapult or the, or, or, or the ongoing perpetual uh, movement of that spirit because that spirit is, can be influenced. That spirit or that energy is malleable. That energy can be directed or redirected um, given whatever internal things are going on inside of us, our internal lives within our bodies, within our spirit, within our mental space, but also our external lives. All the material and non-material conditions, the noises, the, the, the funk, the, 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 the odors, the um, pollutions, the uh, other kinds of um, distractions or, or stimulus or stimuli that may exist in your particular neighborhood, in your particular community, and in part of the world in which you live. All of these can affect change, redirect the energy and its motion, right? This ongoing motion. And that, of course, can lead to a number of either positive outcomes if we can manage it properly or net negative outcomes because that energy sometimes can take control of us, right? If you've ever been angry enough where you can punch, you know, your hole through a, a wall or you've been angry enough where you can essentially um, harm or hurt someone, that's where you know that energy can be destructive, right? That spirit in us can be destructive. So a way in which to address that is to A, recognize um, what's moving, guiding, influencing, and challenging that energy or spirit of yours. Two, putting in place strategies, breathing technique, um, pausing, stepping back, sometimes walking away, just to gather yourself and make sure that that energy, that spirit is guided by you and your best interest rather than by an internal or external stimulus that's not in your best interest. And finally, um, if you have thoughts and experiences uh, around this field of, of emotions, the way I'm describing, but also in ways that uh, scholars also talk about and theorize about emotions, please drop those in the comment section below. Drop your questions there. 
I have been your guided host, Kwesi Kunadu, for yet another episode of Power by Nyame.